Hey guys, welcome back to the I Love You So Much podcast with me, Kenzie Elizabeth, and my best freaking friend and part-time co-host of this podcast, as this is her fourth or fifth, I believe, fifth time on the podcast, Dominique Roberts. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to be here. It's great. My friends and families, my BFFs, as you guys call me. You guys are my BFFs. (laughs) <laughs> Guys, in the Facebook group, everyone calls Dom our BFF. It literally makes me want to cry. Um, for those of you guys who are listening to the podcast, thanks for tuning in. Also, um, we are recording this visually, so it's going to be on my YouTube channel and on my Instagram. For those of you guys who are watching and are confused why I'm holding a mic, it's because it's for the podcast. I also believe the video is going to go up before the podcast. Um, so anyways, just so you guys know, it's literally on every single platform that I have. If you guys want to go back and watch the video and whatnot, but today's episode is going to be um, basically just on Black Lives Matter, uh, white privilege. We talk, obviously, the murder of George Floyd um, and just kind of everything that's going on. If you guys have not seen social media um, or seen this on social media, I think you're actually living under a rock. But also, I will say, Dom, I was thinking about this today, and I was, like, on FaceTime with Val last night and just getting, like, so emotional because I was like, this, it seems like there's such, like, breakthrough almost in in the sense of, like, people I would have never imagined or never thought are posting Black Lives Matter, just, like, with who they were or whatever. Yes. But the thing that scares me, I think I'm kind of also living in this bubble where, because I'm only seeing this on social media, which is amazing, it's all I want to see, I'm living in this bubble of, like, I forget that there's people who don't agree, even though both of us are getting all these, like, comments of people who are, like, so ignorant, um, but I just forget that that exists. So, Anyways, um, with that being said, I hope you guys are following along online right now with everything that's going on, and I just really believe there's so much positive change, and we are with Dominique Roberts, only the best person in the entire world, my best friend, also someone who is really, like, spearheading this, and I think Dom literally has been, like, given a platform through this, which if anyone deserves it, it is Dom. I will go on and on. I think, first off, I just want to go on record. We've, we've talked so much about how we love each other just throughout whatever, but I love Dom. She's my best friend in the entire world. She could probably ruin my life. She's the first person to try to fight (laughs) someone for me. She's the first person to continuously offer up her kidney for me. Like, I have never met, outside of that though, like, I have never met someone who is a better human being than you. When I met Dom, she had bright green hair, and I immediately was like, I want to be her friend so bad. I remember I drove you home from class one day, and you like wanted to hang out and I was like oh my gosh really like I felt really cool and then we instantly became best friends we started our car talks all the time Dom knows more about me than anyone yes. probably literally I don't think I've and shared you literally actually ruin me yeah no literally yeah I mean yeah we you easily know more about me than anyone else and I think I am so in awe of you I've already told you this but I was literally like in tears earlier just thinking I hate saying I'm proud of someone because I feel like that makes it like I feel like in a weird way, it's like I'm taking credit. Does that make sense? But I'm just so like yeah. in awe of you and I'm your number one fan. And apparently my daddy's a number two fan, which we love that. Shout out oh, to Nick Piper. Man. What a guy. We love him. Um, but anyways, you were so anointed. You were so called. Like, it's crazy too, just knowing you before all of this happened um, and like the change that you're leading and the, the way that you're educating people and doing so like with so much grace that I literally could n- I could never do with so much grace if I were you ever just saying literally at all but you are literally the best human being in the world you're so anointed so called it's crazy like I was just saying just thinking about the past two years and just seeing like having you like seeing you and walking through so many different things with you that I'm like that was so apparent that like that needed to happen in order to to equip you for like what's happening right now yes literally I remember exactly. crying like I remember we were in the hallway on, in Hollywood of Trader Joe's and you were crying because you were so stressed out and we were like there has to be a reason that you're going through this right now and like that specific reason as to why you were crying it's like a total setup for where you're at now and I yeah. just think you were breaking so many chains you are helping so many people I'm learning so much from you and it's literally the most incredible thing I've ever seen so I go on and on about how much I love Dom all the time. So I will get into this. Um, Dom, this episode is mainly going to be just kind of listening and learning from Dom. But something I wanted to share even before we get into this, um, first off, is that I am more committed than ever to learning, unlearning, I think even more importantly, honestly, 
um, and just being part of the solution. I like, I'm so sorry. One, I've not had enough diversity among any of like my whole entire platform as a whole at all. Like it's literally laughable. I think I have always been someone I've always been in support of Black Lives Matter, but I am like embarrassed that it's taken me so long to like really, really educate myself on the topic. Like I feel like honestly, even just within the like last 48 hours with the books I've been reading and just the documentaries and stuff, I'm like, how did I not know this specifically? Like there's just so many things that it's like embarrassing that it's taken me this long to like continue. Like I had seen the like big Netflix ones, but there's so, there's just so much that you can learn that's like so quick like even reading white fragility literally takes like a few hours i read it in a few hours and it was so helpful um i actually always guys by the way i always have an ipad when i record so i'm not like reading off the script i promise i always have an outline but i <laughs> did um actually quote things because if you guys listen to this podcast regularly you know i try to try to quote things um and it's laughable every single time because it's just like i never know it but what I wanted to do at the beginning of this um, was just kind of define racism from what I read in White Fragility, just in the sense of I think it's really important as a white person to like, I mean, humble myself and always regardless, but like, especially right now with racial humility. And I think, um, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are listening to this podcast who um, think that they aren't a part of the problem. And I definitely would have considered myself as one of those. And like, at the end of the day, like, that's just not true. Like, we are all a part of the problem and there needs to be ownership. So I'm going to read some things from the book really quickly, just so you guys can, um, I just think it's important to listen to this before and you'll see why. Okay. So I think most people, most of these are direct quotes, by the way, from white fragility credit where credit's due. Okay. Most white people have limited information as to what racism is and how it works. Um, uh, most people just view it as a conscious intolerance. Um, in, what it really is, it's racism is a society-wide dynamic that occurs at the group level. So when I say that only whites can be racist, I mean that in the U.S. only whites have the collective, social, and institutional power and privilege over people of color. People of color do not have this power and privilege over white people. So then it says, um, we and we talk, are going to talk about this so much in the episode, but white people focus more on not being racist or being called racist and not enough on how to learn, humble ourselves, and be a part of the solution. Instead, we end up making it about ourselves and hurting our people even worse. So stopping our racist patterns needs to be more important than working to convince others that I don't have them. It is on me to identify my racist patterns and work to change them. We need to be, we need to own our racism and not focus on our intentions, but focus on the impact our behavior has and apologize for that impact. So um, basically I'm just encouraging everyone as well as myself, I'm with everyone um, to like humble ourselves, take responsibility, and grow and learn where we need to grow and learn because at the end of the day like this is a systematic thing this is not something that um like a white progressive necessarily like is immune to and the book also talks about how a lot of white progressives are actually like a really big issue in black lives matter because they're like oh look at these white people who are racist and they they fail to recognize their own racial racist patterns so anyways i just wanted to say that because i know um, I just know my demographics, so um, I think if I can learn something, I think as you guys can as well. But we're going to get into the episode. I love you, Dom. Thank you so much for coming on. You're my best friend in the entire world. I give you my kidneys. <laughs> I love you, Kenzie, and I'll give you both my kidneys. I think you, like, hit on such a good point, too, when you were talking about um, just own it, you know? Like, you just, at this point, it's like this, what we're experiencing right now is like, unlike anything we've seen before in history. Because of social media, because of just where we're at at a society, it's like all of this is being shown in front of our faces. Like we're seeing racism at a, like a face level value. Like there's videos, unfortunately, of people being killed. And it's just like, we have to look at it and like, digest it even though it's uncomfortable to digest and it's like you have to like you said like you have to come from this humble position of being like I'm not right I don't think I'm gonna get this right and I'm actually gonna make a lot of mistakes but I'm more determined to be a part of the solution and to learn and make mistakes than I am to like defend myself and like you said like prove that I'm not racist it's like 
I actually have so much more respect for people that are like, wow, I actually have had those thoughts before towards black people, but like, I don't want to think like that. Like that right there, like that's how you become an agent of change. And it's like, racism is learned, right? Hatred is taught. It's shown. Like, I don't think people are just born hate hateful. Like, I don't think you were born Kenzie and you're like, I was born to hate only black people. Like I don't, right. Like that's, you know, it's yeah. an ideology. Prejudice is an ideology. So because it's a learned ideology, you can unlearn it. And by unlearning it, it takes you digging deep, becoming humble and recognizing that you're a part of the problem. And you're like, but I've never said like, okay, maybe you haven't said the N word. Maybe you have a ton of black friends and you live this beautiful, colorful life. I don't know. But it does take a time of reflection and being like, my existence because because of institutionalized racism and that our country was founded off of racism has led to being a part of the problem and i need to look deep within to realize and come to an understanding of the racism and what being white has done to our country on an institutional level and i feel like once you start going there it's like all these like things and thoughts start coming up and like I was talking to one of my friends and um, he was just so real and he was like, when I have racist thoughts, like I need to reflect on them. Like if I have a racist thought, he was like, as a white man, like he was like, I need to like reflect on those thoughts and like, where did that ideology come from? Like, where did that come from and how do I unlearn that? And it's like that position right there to even acknowledge that you've had racist thoughts before instead of being so scared of what people think and think of you and all these things it's like that is how we're actually going to see a change in the world around us yeah also it's well just kind of on the topic of social media but you're saying it's crazy because i was also reading and they're just talking about in like the civil rights movement and stuff and how you see history change so much with even who we're electing like appearance wise to actual some sort of progress in like a civil rights movement with just the power of tv and it's like you see that now but amplified through social media because another difference is now each one of us has a platform each one of us has influence each one of us has a way to just send a video out and that video can have like millions and millions of views rather than going through a tv station and a tv network so it's like i think on one end of sharing on social media when people are like don't let it just be on stay on instagram a thousand percent obviously like that and unfortunately like that is a problem but i also think it's really really important to share on social media as well because i wasn't even really thinking about it in the sense of like how much the media um over just has impacted the civil rights movement over time and then it's like, okay, well, we have social media now. And it's, you look at this and you think about it, like social media, like people who have like spoken up and done things like your graphics have gone everywhere. Like Quentin stuff has gone everywhere. Like that stuff is being used on social media and everyone's seeing that. And like this, who, this all started literally like where we're at this week with like everyone doing like the blackout and stuff. It's literally through people sharing on social media and using their voice, you know? Yeah. And I think that it's like, that's the step, right? It's like, all of this is a process. It's a journey. And it's something that's not going to happen overnight. So it's like, we need to be committed to being a part of the solution. We need to be committed to the process of change. And it's like, we also really need to have grace in this time too. I like, I think that right now is like, if you want people to learn, right? Like say if someone has a drug problem, an alcohol problem, and you want to talk to them about their problem, right? You're not going to have these conversations by yelling at someone. Someone who has a drug addiction and alcohol problem, if you yell at them, they're going to get defensive. They're going to puff up their chest. They're going to be mad. They're going to be like, what? You're calling me out? Like it's, they're not, they're instantly anything you have to say, they're not going to listen to you. And so it's like, we need to be having these conversations with grace and love in the back of our minds. Like at the end of the day, if someone says, if you're having a conversation with a friend, if you're talking on social media about these things, it's like, we need to approach everyone with grace and love. Like today um, with the blackout, I posted, um, I use the hashtag black lives matter. 
and I went to bed, woke up, and had my DMs like stormed with people being like, do not use that hashtag, like da 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 da. And I was like, oh, 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 ah, oopsies, like totally did not, my bad. So I um, de- like deleted it, reposted, it, and just acknowledged it. I was like, hey guys, my bad, total mistake, wasn't even thinking that way. Thank you so much. Here's a POC that his business was ruined um, during what's happening right now. Like, feel free to support him. I think that'd be awesome. And it's like that right there, like the, the mistake that I made, it's like, I'm still met with grace. I'm not being canceled for what's happened. And it's like, we can't cancel people for making mistakes. And it, And I just think like right now, especially as we're learning, it's like, We need to really focus on like the heart behind people. And if you want to see change happen, you have to be more committed to seeing change happen. It's like, like I said, if we're using the analogy of someone who's addicted to drugs and alcoholism, that's a, that's a long process. They're not just going to give up drinking and all these things. It's like, you have to be committed to walking with them step by step and I'm, yeah, it's not my job. I guess, yeah, it's not the job of the black community to educate white people. But for me personally, I feel called to do so. I mean, I personally, I personally have a burden to educate people. And I want people, I want to educate people out of love, not out of anger. Um, and yeah, I have frustrations and I get upset, but I, I truly do want to educate people and help them and become better because like, what's happening right now we've I mean we've tried everything in the past and it still hasn't worked so it's like this is going to take deep reflection and deep healing for like change to take place yeah that's so good I think and I also can't even imagine what like on your end what it's like to give those people grace like or to give any of us (laughs) grace like literally at all but I also think it again and it's like it also takes like deep responsibility and being like no I actually am a part of the problem like have I ever like would I ever just like call myself a racist person no but it's like we are all a part of the problem it's also like a systematic thing like you have to understand and even to the topic of like I was reflecting and I'm like I do a horrible job of diversity on my socials and like just platform podcast YouTube whatever that might be businesses I support work with like, I have not done good, a good job with that, like, literally at all, and that is something that I intentionally actually went into 2020, like, wanting to be better about, and has just, like, completely gone to the back burner, and it's, like, that's not okay, like, that's not something I want to be doing at all, and then it's also, like, another thing we were talking about the other day with, um, just the internet, I think right now, obviously, like, people are hurting like it is a it can be a very hateful place and people are very quick to try to cancel and people are very quick to like try to hate someone or whatever that might be or if I um don't say one thing or something like someone will get mad and blah 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 and I think a lot of people just like private conversations I've had with friends who are like so like oh my gosh everyone hates me blah 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 I'm like people are hurting like people are just hurting it's not about like again it's like as white people like do not make it about yourselves like do not I think even write people off right now as they're angry yeah I'm like if I need to be the punching bag for a second by all means I'll be the punching bag like it's not it's literally not about me so it's also on the other like totally different ends like having like understanding not I mean not that you could we could ever understand like the hurt but just understanding that there is so much hurt that we'll never experience or never even be able to actually understand the level of but also like with that giving even more grace when people are so angry like I'm just I'm really concerned personally that so many like people are so much more concerned with like things that are like material items that are being ruined than like lives that are being taken like not yeah that is like really actually terrifying to me that like that's what's now being focused on and it's like no there's literally lives being lost like I don't understand what we're not getting here you know yeah and and like what's so crazy is like like let's talk about like life for a second right like when someone dies they're dead you can't you can't raise them back if someone's like I mean dead 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 like no resuscitation possible like they are dead that is it they don't get like round two, you know? And so what's so scary is like 
people, like you said, are talking about the material things. I'm like, you just put a, you just, someone's life just ended. With money, with resources, you can rebuild anything with resources. It's like, there's no resources, there's no amount of money that can replace a human life. Like, I don't care how much money you have. You know, and so I think people need to start realizing like how serious this is and like how how much bigger the conversation needs to be. And I think like even the microaggressions that you're seeing in the black community of people lashing out and being upset, it's like those microaggressions literally come from I this is the best analogy and I'm like working on like I wanna post this and make it a conversation piece but like an analogy for like being born black is like being born into having like being born with skin that's almost like a really itchy sweater so like just being born right off the bat is uncomfortable it's this really itchy sweater that I can never take off and then every time someone makes like a racist comment or an offensive joke or whatever it's like that sweater just gets tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And it's like, the more that people have dealt with racism and felt it firsthand, the more angry, the more upset they're going to be, the more irritable because they've been wearing this sweater that is just so tight that they're going to explode. And it's like, there's no release. It's like, there's no escape. And it's like, people need to start realizing like, that's the reality of like what it's like to have like black skin and so like you're saying like right now we can't afford to make this about like like white people can't afford to make this about themselves like they like you said like they've done enough like you need to start focusing on your black counterparts your your the people of color around you and like I I was just like so undone but I had this kid this little kid in my comments, like a high schooler. And he goes, I, my friend, Laura, she's like local to LA and she is like a small business, lost her job to COVID. She's um, this, she's a young black female super. And she has started this bakery thing and she's been like selling, like you can order and then she'll drive to your house and like drop it off. And it's created like business for her. It's been her business since COVID happened and it's incredible. And so she's donating all her proceeds. She donated all her proceeds this week that she made um, to one of like the anti-racism like organizations. And I posted the graphic that was like support black businesses. And this kid was like, that's racist. He was like, that's racist. Why are you having people focus on only supporting black businesses? If you want equality, then like, you need to have people, and you can't say that. And I literally am like, bro, this is the definition of racism. Racism is prejudice, right? We're as human beings, we all have some types of prejudice ideologies that we've picked up on just existing. That's human nature. Plus power. Your black, your people, the people of color around you might have prejudices that's just human nature. We all do, but it's not met with power. Exactly. And so it's like for you. Yeah. And it's like for you to say that and talk like that and just keep saying that. And like, you're racist, you're this, you're that. I'm like, you're not, now you're not helping lift up a black business owner, you know, like you're not, you want, you want to talk solution-based, solution-based this that stop burning down buildings stop this i'm like if you really i mean really want to be a part of the solution then i mean what's the big deal about helping someone and like really diversifying once again like what's wrong with support i didn't say only support black owned businesses but support them and it's like right now it's like we're dealing with these young kids who are so, who are picking up bigotry from their friends and picking up bigotry from like, just, yeah, the world around them. And it's so harmful, it's so hurtful. 
because these are the future employers. I keep saying this on every podcast I go on. It's like these kids, like with their ideologies of like bigotry and hatred and covert racism, it's like they will employ people one day. They will own businesses one day. They will be a part of leading America one day. And if no one calls them out, no one checks their white privilege, no one says enough is enough, stop talking like that. No one tells them that they're wrong. No one has a loving conversation about racism in their home. Then this walk is just going to be a lot longer. This is, I mean, like, buckle in. And I'm challenging people right now on my platform. It's like parents, like brothers and sisters, you have brothers and sisters that are teenagers. It's like, you need to talk to them because the social right now, it seems like the trend just for my comments and my DMS, like that I'm speaking from is like these kids, it's like, it's not trendy to be anti-racist in junior high and high school. Just so based off of like, social pressure and like the popular kids and what do they have to say but it's like if we're based off of the morals and values that our parents teach us and the people around us the people we look up to if the, their morals and values like match being anti-racist then you're influenced by who's around you so even like the influencers that we watch and the influencers that we support if they're anti-racist I'm going to be anti-racist they have influence over me and I think all of this, this huge tangent <laughs> that I just went off on is like, these are all things you need to keep in mind when it comes to finding a long-term solution. You know, posting on social media is raising awareness and it's a short-term solution and it's helping spread the word. And I think it's what's causing kind of this new revolution of like looking within yourself and unpacking your covert racism. But I just think that like we're on the brink of something that could be so beautiful and like honestly lead to us, America, being an anti-racist society. Also, I just really want to point something out to the whole, I mean, the idea of reverse racism is uh, like don't even, the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life to be like really just putting that out there. But you are not like, shot or walking down the street worried that you're gonna be shot or you're not around a police officer and like worried for your life it's not this it's literally like not the same thing and exactly like what people don't understand is like with racism comes power like what you're saying so it's literally impossible only white people like white people have the power so only white people are able to be racist it's a different thing like there's power involved and people are not like, I think that's what people don't get. And again, it just keeps going back to people being more concerned about making it about themselves than like humbling themselves and listening. Um, there was a post that I wanted to read and it said, um, I don't have the original Instagram post. I'll try to find it. But um, it says, here's an example of how white privilege sounds. You keep saying it's horrible an innocent black man was killed, but destroying property has to stop. Try saying it's horrible that property is being destroyed, but killing innocent black men has to stop. You're prioritizing the wrong part. And I think that's where we're seeing a lot of people like, we're, like uh, that's exactly the, the, literally exactly what we're saying in the point. Like I'm extremely concerned for a world and even just the thought pattern when we immediately go to like, oh my gosh, but the stuff. And it's like, no, 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 but the lives. And also, might I add, at what point, like, it's like black people literally cannot win. Like you peacefully protest and then like you don't listen to the peaceful protest and then you go, for, so it's like, what were we expecting? And like, not to say, obviously I know white people are also like protesting at not whatever, but it's like, also, then you see like all of the like riots and looters and everyone that everyone is so angry and an uproar and blah, blah, blah. And then you look in the video and it's like, there's also like white people doing that though, but then they're also blaming the black people because of course they're blaming the black people because that's how they view people them in their head like in their heads do you see what i'm saying like it's yeah. actually just and insane it's, like what yeah and um so i don't know if you watch like christine kane and the psychologist that she went but she talked about how like there was like a teacher's conference and they all went to the teacher's conference and 
they were like, okay, um, I'm going to show you this class dynamic and you guys are going to tell me who the problem child is. And they like, at the end of it, they like pinpointed this one little black kid. Every single teacher was like, it's that little, little black kid. And then they were like, there was no problem in that classroom. But you guys all pointed like this little black four-year-old kid. And it just was like, thank you. This is what I'm talking about. This thug narrative that like, that m matures, like black kids can't even be black kids. Like there's like a 13 year old black girl is already looked to as she's compared to as like a 21 year old woman. Like you, you guys are like making these children and giving them mature titles and saying young man and all these things. And it's this narrative that plays into like them being criminalized, black people being criminalized and it's hurtful and it's harmful and we need to see it. We need to know it and we need to understand it. Because it's like, if we don't, if we keep just going on like we've been going on, then this is gonna happen again. And I'm gonna be, Kenzie and I are gonna be 40 years old and we're gonna be on a podcast and we're gonna be talking about this. And then Kenzie and I are gonna be 40 years old and we're going to be marching about this. And I'm not saying that the solution is going to happen overnight. I'm not saying there's not going to be, there's not going to be more injustice when we're 40 years old. But what I'm saying is what's happening right now, it needs to drop to an exponential level. And that starts with just unpacking covert racism. What are the best ways to be an ally? Like what are things I can do better? And then just kind of across the board, like what are the best things that you can do? Yeah, um, I think when it comes to this, it's like, first, it's like, first, this is just kind of the equation that I've just been giving people, but it's like, change starts in the mind, your world, then the world. And it's like, so it's like the first step to the equation is like, you need to heal your mind. You need to go dig deep in your mind. You need to heal your heart. You need to like see your like racist patterns. You need to recognize them. And then you need to reflect on them. Where did that come from? Why do I see this group of people this way? Why do when this happens, I instantly think this. It's like if you don't reflect and if you don't think and, and do all the back work. And that's like, that's not an overnight process. That's the longest part of the process. But it has to be like an act, you know, it's like an exercise. You have to like work on that muscle. You have to exercise it. And it's like, you need to start there in the mind and doing all of those things. And I have some reflection stuff, questions on my page that you can ask yourself to kind of start that process. But then it's like, part two is like, then you need to call it out in the world, the world around you when black people aren't around. Um, like if you're at brunch with your friends and it's all white friends, and one of them says something like off color, like offensive or racist. It's like, you need to be like, that wasn't okay. You can't talk like that around. Like you just instantly, you need to like be speaking out and actively speaking out about it and on every degree and on every level. And then it's like, after that, it, it like leads to change in your world. And it's like, if enough people start reflecting, if enough people start taking inventory of like, calling out racism and then also reflecting on the racism within them it's like if enough people start doing it the world's going to start changing and i think like that's the hope for humanity right there is that people would take time to start listening and seeing what they're doing and like change within them what do you think are the best ways to amplify black voices yeah i mean I think what you did, I talked about it um, on Lauren's podcast, but I think what you did was so awesome. You're like, I'm doing this live um, with this creator. And I think like collaborations like that, um, all of these things like that you can do, I think are so incredible, so awesome. And that's like how we have to amplify their voices. Like 
it's like going out of our way because right tokenism is horrible i hate tokenism it's honestly at that point it's like just have white people on your podcast just stay in your white bubble like don't even try if you're just going to do tokenism and i mean that i'm not i'm not kidding like tokenism is one of the worst things you can do to becoming an ally but genuine diversity Can you takes explain time, right? tokenism to people that maybe don't know what that Oh, means. yeah. Sorry. So tokenism is like, I feel like what we see a lot in like the ads of today, like just putting a black person there. So it looks like, oh, like we're diverse and like, look, we love black people. But it's like, I don't know. Do you actually or like, or are you just like putting a black person there? So like if people look back, it's just like, oh, yeah, I guess they've used black people before. And and just like different types of tokenism and in ways like that, like just being like, oh yeah, I, I have a black friend in case you get called out for racism. Like, it's like, you can be like, well, I have black friends. And it's just like, just because you have black friends doesn't mean you're racist. Can you Seriously. speak on that? And that? Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of the reflection that I was talking about was like, just because you have black friends does not mean you have you don't have covert racism in your heart and it's like you need to think about that and it's like you need to absorb it and you need to reflect on it and don't be if you instantly if your first thing you want to do is become defensive when someone calls you out for something you have a problem you probably do have covert racism because if anyone were to I mean, I'm not white, but imagine if I was and someone were to call me out and I was genuinely trying to be a part of the solution, I'd be like, thank you. I needed to hear that. My friend um, who is white, she went on vacation. She was on like vacation. She went out like camping or something, was in an Airbnb and everything was going on and she was like posting her vacation, like still the same. And one of the pe people like replied to her story and was like, dude, you're like being tone deaf right now. And she just posted this thing that was like, this, you're so right. I am tone deaf. I did not even realize that I had the privilege of like not being a part of the conversation. And like, it was this beautiful thing. And I'm like, you, you have to put your defenses down if you actually want to join and be an accomplice and being anti-racist. And it's like, just because you have black friends does not mean you have covert racism and it's like you need to have the reflection like people are having right now and it's like and my platform gives you the grace to do that everything that I'm posting right now has been out of love out of wanting to understand and out of understanding and wanting to help educate people and so many people have been like you know it's not your job and I'm like yes I know it's not my job I don't get paid I don't get paid to do any of this like I know girl I know it's not my job it's it ain't paying the bills. And like my point with that is because that's how passionate I am to do this. That's how passionate I am to talk about these things because it's like to see change, like it's gonna take like us to like dig deep and look within and not just have tokenism. And then it's like to fight for genuine diversity. It's like what we need to do is like, okay, tokenism's bad but I don't know any black people that or creators that I like okay so then you're gonna have to do what research who are some black find creators some. killing it yeah go find some and it's gonna take time for you to probably like you know actually find one that you like but like at least you genuinely like them and like you know what I'm saying like you need to start just going out and that's even in your circles like let's take this off the platform you don't have any black friends, like make it a priority, like that you want to start getting to know more black people, like put yourself in spaces that will make you be around more black people. And like, not in a weird way, but like in a genuine, like, I just want to like, you know, I need to get uncomfortable. I want to go to more places like black owned businesses, black owned coffee shops, like all of these things. It's like, we need to take these things and we need to like understand them. I think every, every single thing that you just said, 1,000%. I believe it's Carl Lentz who said this, but it's something along the lines of proximity creates passion and distance creates distortion. So, like, even for me, I'm, like, even in my, like, circles, like, adding more diversity, adding more in whether that's, like, my work life or my personal life or whatever that might be, 
Um, also, I want to say on the topic of like, it's not your job. I think the thing that I'm just so in awe of you is, is that like, it's, I can't even imagine how like emotionally taxing in training as well. Like this, when people are like, um, just for like educational resources, it's like, you shouldn't have to go to like a black person to have to educate you on racism. Like you can easily like educate yourself, but it's just yeah. like what you've done is just like, that's even more like, not that I would expect that from any black person. I just like the fact that you are out doing this and doing how much you're doing. And I just can't even imagine like how taxing um, I'm going off of your post on having black friends does not mean you aren't racist. And then it says, does this apply to you? Question number one, how do I see black people that aren't my friends? Question number two, have I taken the time to understand my black friends and their perspective? Question number three, how do I talk slash let people talk about black people behind closed doors and in white spaces? Um, so I think, I mean, Dom has so much, so many resources on here that can, are like invaluable as far as kind of helping you like dig deeper within yourself and figuring that out. Um, but it's like, no exactly like even I don't know I just think it's so easy like exactly what you were saying to quickly um people are so defensive like what we were talking about the girl on a vacation like people are so defensive and so with like white fragility instead of owning it and learning and growing from it they'll say no I'm not and the conversation stops there and that's the problem because you have like it's a, it's a street and you basically can either turn left or right and you're either going to grow and learn or you're going to turn left and like go literally just keep going on and on and on and you're getting further and further away from growing and it's like that's something I've been thinking about this week too I'm like I'm so grateful that I even have people who would take the time to message me and like let like educate me um like cor like correct me to, like tell me why doing this or saying this isn't correct or isn't right or whatever or even like sharing even more resources with me to share with my audience in particular like as an influencer like I'm so grateful that there are people who even like care enough like to say something and to speak up and like there should be that should be the norm but it's like you I think it's really important to look at it in a way that you're really grateful for and learn from it rather than just getting defensive and pushing it away and going more into a racist bubble to where you're making yeah. like you're disunifying even more yes and like, I think that's where like, we grow next, right? Cause it's like, speed fatigue and all of that is like, we understand that like people have actually like been using that term like, and it's like, if you're white right now and you're experiencing speed fatigue, it's like, you need to understand what's happening right now in our society and you really need to look in. But at the same time, and I've said this on like the other podcasts that I've been on, it's like, this is like something that you do for a living, right? Like posting and, um, and social media, like it's a job for so many other people. And it's like, yes, we need to take time right now as a society to reflect because there's a deep healing that needs to take place. But it's like, how do we move forward? Like what's the social media etiquette on this? And I'm like, the social media etiquette is that like, okay, post a cute photo of yourself, post a cute outfit. I'm not saying don't do that. I go to Instagram to see cute outfits, but like, I mean, can you highlight like a person of color? Can you be like, this outfit was inspired by so-and-so? Like, you don't have to be weird and be like, they're a person of color, but like, you can just be like, so inspired by their page. Like, you know, just creating diversity within their page. And once again, I don't have all the answers. I literally just got a platform five days ago. So like, I don't know. And I'm trying to do my best to think, um, you know, and help. And I'm going to get it wrong too. But I just think that like, we need to start thinking like that. We need to start thinking of ways to become a diverse society so that we, we as a whole, as America, as, you know, Americans, we become anti-racist. Yeah, I think it's about being intentional with it, which is something that I'm trying to be so much better about because I've failed big time in this area and I think having a platform is such a gift there's two things I want to say the first thing saying um having a platform is a really big gift and I like really like obviously the person of faith like I don't view it as my own like I really view it as like a gift and it's like this platform is not just to serve me at all it's actually not to serve me like that's literally not the point 
So it's like, I want to steward this well and use this in ways that are important and in ways that like matter to God. And I think this is the top priority right now. Like I don't see anything else being more important than this. And then the second thing, as an influencer, yes, this is technically my workspace and we're supposed to bring these conversations into our workspace. So like, this is literally my job right now is to do that, you know? And obviously like at some point, it's not going to be like this week, we're all, this is all what we're posting, but it's not, and it's not going to just stop after that, but it's not going to only be this forever, you know? And it's like, I think, and even at that point, like, I think that's awesome because it's like, you're also attracting more people to follow your page and more people who are also going to get more diversity now from this. And like, we will never go back to like, whatever that was before like we will never go back to that ever again like it will always be different hopefully you know yeah and I think that's totally right like I think the reason why there's so many riots and protests and just even social media has taken like the the tone that it's taken like so many popular creators that we love have taken a serious tone that they've taken is because like we've been getting it wrong for so long and we need to start fixing it. So, I mean, I'm just like, I mean, I was telling this with Kenzie, but I'm like, so funny because I feel like out of all my like white friends that I have, I feel like Kenzie has always lived a life of diversity. Like always, like I just really, it's like a part of like who you are. And I think it's just like, you've always never cared like who you put yourself around. Like if you like them, you like them. And I think that's like such a cool way to live and, Um, and the fact that you're doing even more reflection to me gives me hope that like, there's going to be people out there that are going to like grow so much as people just continuing to reflect it because it's like, we're never going to be perfect. Like this doesn't ever end. And it's like, we have to keep going. So it's like, what does that take? Well, to create a good work within yourself, it's like, it takes you constantly having the discipline of I'm committed to self-reflection in anything that you do. Not just racism, but anything that you do. If you want to come better in any area, constant reflection, taking time to think and look within. Amazing. I love you. This is the best episode. Thank you so much for coming on. All right, guys, um, we stopped recording and then we started talking and then we wanted to talk about this. So we're back. Hope you didn't miss us too much. Um, I was just sharing with Dom how I think I mean, one of the most disturbing things to me is how many people have messaged me um, just when I said that we were recording about like, how does Dom handle um, people using the Bible as means to like defend racism and segregation and um, I mean, historically like slavery and whatever that might be. Um, And then we were just kind of going off. So Dom, if you would like to take it away um feel free I can always add but I would love to hear what you have to say yeah I mean I think for me from like the Christian perspective it's so disturbing when I hear people talk about how like use scripture to back up racism just because it's like first off Jesus was not white like he was was not an Anglo-Saxon European male Like he was from Jewish descent and more than likely he was probably brown just because like in the Middle East and just, you know, that hemisphere of the world, like that, all of that, whatever. So if people keep saying, well, if Jesus, yeah, if Jesus were here in the world today, he would be probably discriminated against in some degree. And I don't know what that would look like, but what I do have to say is like, first off that's not the heart of God anything that God creates he loves so he loves everyone and it's like for you to say anyone's less than or that there needs to be a separation or that you know there's just so many things and I think what's so important that we need to recognize that that's like that's harmful and it's sacrilegious and it's distorting the word of God which honestly upsets God more because God's not a liar Like he's a very, he's an honest like God and he's a just God and he's a fair God. So it's like when people say that, I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, I don't think we're talking about the same God here. And so I think what's so important, if there's someone, 
yeah go 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 no i i like am so so heated about this i have i mean i'm heated about everything but like this is a whole new (laughs) this is like you are oh my gosh especially here's the thing one we're not reading the same book i don't know what book you're reading it's not the same book okay two i don't know what god you're talking to but it's not my god it's not the god of the universe so that's the second thing yeah in what jesus was not white like when are you going to understand that? Fourth, I'll just keep yeah. going on. God is for reconciliation. God is for equality. God is for people. You see that gender-wise, God is for equality. Race is, like race-wise, God is for equality. Like it was never, there's not a superiority thing. That is a man-made thing. And when you're using the Bible and the word of God in like your weird made-up religion that you're using as your defense to vote a certain way, which was never the point, and also... God and Jesus are not put into a political party. I'm so sorry. And also, might even I'm gonna go ahead and add that I think the political party that you're using your God for is not even the one that not I'm not gonna speak for God and Jesus and who he's gonna vote for, but I don't think that that (laughs) is a reason to vote the certain way that you're voting. That's not what I think at all. So it's like, if you're wanting to help the poor, as the Bible is saying, and wanting to have equality, as the Bible is saying, and help people and love people, it is not by using the Bible to use that as a way to defend your racism and defend historically what slavery was and whatever. Like, that is the most messed up thing you can possibly do. And I really, really encourage you to actually read the book and actually talk to the God. Because there is genuinely, in my eyes, no possible way that you have a relationship yeah. with God and you still think those things. Like, how how are, do you have a relationship with God? How are you talking to the God of love of the universe? And you are not, like, you don't have some sort of heart change. Like, I'm very concerned. Yes. It's just wrong. Like, there's yeah. nothing about it. Yeah. Yeah, and to me, like, what I think is so crazy is, like, Jesus even speaks on racism in the Bible. It's like the story of the Samaritan. And it's like the Jewish people have like a prejudice against the Samaritan people. And he calls it out. He's like, which commandment? He's like, what are the two greatest commandments? Just to love your God with your heart, mind, and soul. And then to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so he calls, he uses the parable of the good Samaritan of being like, if you're a man and um, this man who's on the side of the road, who was the one who stopped to help him? The Samaritan. So who's the one who did good in this situation? The Samaritan which is proving to the fact that like, it's an unjust use and a twisting of God's word. And it's like, okay, change the word Samaritan to black and white. You know, like, I'm serious because it's the same context. It is the exact same context. And so I think people need to like realize and recognize and look under the historical background of what we're talking about. And it's like, God will always side with the oppressed and um, always, always. So yeah, I just think that is the most dangerous narrative that you could feed as a Christian right now. And actually, I just want to say something really really quick. And no, actually, I'm just going to hold back. But, you know, I just want to challenge you guys to have a conversation out of love. And you can't do that. It's not right. It's not right, and it's very harmful. It's very damaging, and if you want to be a part of the solution, that is not the way. I had to drill yeah, myself see, in. Dom handles everything <laughs> so much better than I do. I especially like. I don't know how you do this, but I, another thing I will say now that I've like kind of relaxed a little bit is that also just on be <laughs> on behalf of like as a white Christian, I am so sorry that that is ever. That, that not even that that has ever been used, that that is still being used as some sort of propaganda thing. Like, that is not, like, the Bible. That is not Christianity. And more importantly, that's not God or God's heart. Like, that could not be more opposite. So I am so sorry. If, like, I, this, there's really nothing more, I think, that enrages me more than, like, this specific topic as well. Just, like, I don't, like, the whole situation. Like, just justifying it in the use of, like, the thing that can, like, save you. Like, no, absolutely not. So, that's just wrong. I'm not even gonna be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, it's just, it's just wrong. And, like, there's nothing, no, absolutely not. So, yeah. anyways. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. No, 
Period. But that's- In the words of Dominic <laughs> Roberts. <laughs> period. That's period right there. I will have, it's, her Instagram is Dom Roberts, so there's an X. I'm going to have it in the show notes so you guys can just click right there. And then if you guys are watching on um, YouTube or Instagram, YouTube, it will be linked. Instagram, it will be tagged. Um, I love you so much, Dom. Thank you. I am literally so in awe of you. I think I've always thought you were the greatest person in the entire world. I've always said I will give you my kidney, but even I just like literally every single day, like earlier this morning, I was literally doing my Devo and I was praying and I was crying because I was thinking about how you were the best person ever. And I'm just like, so in awe of you. And I just love you. So Kenzie, you you're so going to make me cry. On. I'm serious. <laughs> you're going to make me cry because guys, you don't understand. Kenzie's my best friend. Like there's so many things I could tell you about the things that she's done for me. It's not even funny, but Kenzie, you already know that I love you and I'm obsessed with you and that you're my best friend forever. Because you own my kidneys, so. We should get BFF bracelets. You know how those are, like, really trendy right now? We should get those. Yeah. I thought you were going to say tattoos, and I was like, are you going to get, like, kidney outlines? I'm I'm actually afraid because you would actually try. (laughs) Yeah. But, like, I actually would do it, you know? Yeah, like, We'll talk later. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll let you know. I'll keep you posted on that one. (laughs) Okay. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. I really, really hope that um, we can all just take this and learn. I know that I'm taking this and learning. This is not something that I'm like shouting and saying I'm not part of the problem by any means. Like I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to unlearn. I'm trying to educate myself. Not even trying. I am. That's what I'm doing. So I love you guys. Thank you for listening. Um, you do anything from this episode, follow Dom, please. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you guys next week. There's going to be a lot more um, content and stuff all along my socials as well. If you guys want to check out more stuff there and Facebook group, all that stuff, but love you guys and I'll see you next week.